Hi everyone, I'm WABC Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg and this is Wake Up Weather on ABC 7NY and for Weather or Not, sponsored by TD Bank. Well, it's not as beautifully boring as we've seen over the last couple of weeks. You know, we're in our ninth and 10th straight days of uh, dry weather. It's been 15 out of 16 September days that have had no measurable precipitation. I think we can do one more day of that on our Tuesday, getting our 10th straight dry day. Uh, one thing is we definitely have more cloudiness coming into the picture on Tuesday, so you'll sense that you know something's starting to change. We had some wildfire smoke aloft from the Canadian wildfires on Monday, along with some high cloudiness. And it looks like that area of smoke aloft will be a little bit more concentrated over parts of the Hudson Valley. So even if we see breaks in the clouds and some filtered sunshine also might be a bit of a hazy look. So we're definitely obscuring the sunshine a little bit more on Tuesday. And it looks like that smoke lifts to the north on Wednesday. But at the same time, we're watching a low along the coast creep our way and add a lot of cloud cover to our skies. Another thing obscuring the sun is just the change in season and the loss of daylight. Our sunsets, which are around 7 o'clock on the autumnal equinox, which is this coming Sunday, the sunset will be before 7 o'clock, 6.52 in the evening. And in a month, in mid-October, the sunsets are a little close to 6.15, so losing two or three minutes of daylight this time of year every day. For your Tuesday, it's the 10th straight dry day. I mean, we haven't had a dry stretch like this actually since February, believe it or not. But there will be more clouds in the sky for sure. And there's also a little patchy fog early on in the morning and then a lot of high clouds that thin out at times and you have partial sunshine, but not a bad day. Pleasant in terms of the rainfall. It's not just a lot of heavy rain coming in and we're not forecasting a soaking and we're not doing an AccuWeather alert for your Wednesday. But I think there could be a little spotty drizzle on Wednesday morning. And then some showers and rain are likely to come in from the south during the afternoon hours. So some of our northern suburbs may not even rain during much of the day. And then we wait until Wednesday night to see some showers. Showers will linger through the second half of the week. There are shower chances Thursday and Friday, and it actually looks like Friday may be a better chance than Thursday. And I'll explain in the weather map setup in just a second, which is quite complicated. What we know is over the weekend, we're going to start to dry things out. It may be more of a transition day on Saturday, but it looks like we'll get the sunshine and cleaner skies back on Sunday. But our temperatures are back below normal because the way we're clearing out is a cooler autumn air mass coming out of eastern Canada. So instead of the 80 degree temperatures we saw last weekend, we'll be closer to the 70 degree mark, maybe lower to mid 70s, best case scenario. Again, a little patchy fog on your Tuesday morning. Could be some spots where it's locally dense on the island. Certainly Hudson Valley, Connecticut, some areas of patchy fog. Then those visibilities will improve and the high thin clouds will be around. Now, our weather is very dependent on a system that has been a, a bit of a, a, a mystery off the Carolina coast because it is a post tropical or excuse me, a potential tropical cyclone that was forecast to become Helene but really never gained that tropical structure or even subtropical structure where the hurricane center defined it as a named storm Helene. At the same time, it had tropical storm force winds, a storm surge of one to three feet and causing big rains over the Carolinas. But in a technical sense, scientific sense, in terms of its structure, it wasn't named. Regardless, we've had bad weather, especially on the north side of the storm, which is another indication that it's not fully tropical. And we've seen that over parts, especially over parts of North Carolina. So we watch that rainfall. And I'm going to start out big picture talking about Wednesday, because what we have is that weakening low over the Carolinas. But there is a second low that's well offshore. So the weather map's a bit muddled. There's probably a lot of showers and rain that are going into West Virginia, maybe into Southern Pennsylvania. There's another area offshore that's trying to reach toward us. But how far north does it get? And I think later in the day, we have a better chance of rain, especially south of the city. So north of the city, not a lock that we see rain during the daylight hours. Once we start to get rainfall, consider that we've had a very long dry stretch. So any of the oils or grease that's really trapped in a lot of our pavement and our roads, that's going to start to come to the surface and there can be slippery travel. So once you see it start to rain, take it extra slow. Be very, very cautious. Now we're likely to get a period of rain that does swing into the area later Wednesday and Wednesday night. But as we go into Thursday, a low is going to wrap up off of Cape Cod. The low that was that potential tropical storm 
off the Carolinas actually dips farther south again. You kind of have these two doing a little bit of a dance, and it looks like there won't be much activity around. Mostly cloudy skies, maybe a passing shower. But as this low to our east kind of leaves a piece behind, along with a front approaching from our north and east, that may be a better mechanism to trigger some showers, and that would be on Friday. So that's why I say shower, Friday may have a better chance of seeing some showers than Thursday. That's the setup. Then this backdoor cold front will essentially be our sweeper. It'll try to kick that low to the south. There'll still be some lingering moisture around, so I can't say we're going to turn mostly sunny. But while we have some lingering clouds, a mainly dry day, could there be a morning shower? It's not out of the question, but I think it'll be more about breezy with clouds trying to break for some sunshine and temperatures around that 70 degree mark. And it looks like Sunday would be a cleaner sky and in the lower 70s. Just back to those rainfall amounts because through the day on Tuesday, we've got our heavy rainfall amounts in the Carolinas. And notice how we're just, it's a razor's edge here. It's just not a lot that we get heavy rains out of it. The best chance of seeing significant rains would be along the Jersey Shore, southern half of New Jersey. And eastern Long Island could actually get some very heavy rain closer to the lows offshore, while the rest of the area probably gets under an inch of rainfall through, through this entire stretch. But we'll watch it very closely. I think the best threat of seeing some steady rain across the area would be late Wednesday and Wednesday night, and then a, another round of showers coming through as we go into the day on Friday. And even if you look over the next three days, it's just sort of a consensus and a lot of our computer guidance, the rainfall amounts are not particularly impressive. The short term future cast, a lot of high clouds and a little bit of patchy fog on Tuesday morning. But notice that's not a bad look in the afternoon. I mean, some areas are mostly cloudy. Some areas are partly sunny. We've got temperatures in the mid 70s at the beaches, upper 60s Montauk and upper 70s again, north and west. So it is a continuation of this stretch, but just not as pretty in terms of the sky. Then the clouds are coming from the south on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. There's definitely more moisture around. I think north and west will wake up to another dry sky on Wednesday morning, but there might be some light showers or a little spotty drizzle, especially south and east. And then all day long, that, those showers are trying to get up here, but it might wait until late in the day and into the evening hours for them to really make inroads into the city and into the northwest suburbs. So the rain may be confined south of New York City during the day on Wednesday. It's definitely a close shave and a difficult forecast, but I don't want to say that Wednesday is a washout by any means. If you're choosing your Tuesday as your travel day, watch out for some delays through the Mid-Atlantic and into the Carolinas. There are a couple of showers down in South Florida and it's hot. Speaking of heat, look at all the heat where it is through the middle of the country. I mean, you have Fargo going up to 87 degrees in middle September. So we have record warmth going all the way into the high plains and the northern Rockies. There are a lot of showers actually in the parts of the Rockies. You might have some delays, Denver, Salt Lake. The southwest looks good, but there are some showers getting into the Pacific Northwest. The overall steering pattern and weather pattern shows a lot of heat building into the center of the country and trying to come our way. But remember, we have this troughiness in the east from that low I talked about into the start of the weekend and that high pressure trying to build down from Canada. So we kind of have a barrier from getting too warm with this, even though we'll be watching a temperature map that's showing some late summer heat off to the west. There are some signs it tries to make another push our way into next week, but there may be some mischief going on off the Carolina coast. So whether it's still some tropical entity or another area of low pressure or we're getting fronts from the north and west, I just don't think we're going to be able to share in on all that warmth that's going on over the middle of the country. With that said, the Climate Prediction Center beyond the seven day is still showing our temperatures above normal, but I think it's telling that it's showing much above through the Midwest and maybe into northern New England, but not as much here in the tri-state area. So I don't think we're going too hot. And if you notice, our temperatures are settling back towards seasonable as we get unsettled through the week into the weekend. We're hovering more lower 70s and then into the next week. Maybe we try to see a little bit of a warm up after the 25th or 26th. I mean, we're in the 70s, it's not like it's chill, but it's not the summer warmth that we've gotten so used to here in uh, the beginning of September. In terms of precipitation, the Climate Prediction Center has us in near to below normal precipitation, meaning maybe all that tropical moisture is more hovering over the southeast and we're getting some fronts to suppress that. So we'll see how that pans out because we are rather dry. We do have an area of drought that's over parts of southern New Jersey and some dry patches. Our water supplies are okay, 
but we definitely could use the rainfall. Remember, we only have less than a quarter of an inch of rainfall so far in September, nearly two inches below average, and we're cutting into that annual surplus we've had. Our reservoirs are running 3% above average levels right now, but that could continue to drop even though we're going outside of the high consumption season. Look at the overall rain chances. You can see how the highest is Wednesday night, and then a little on Thursday, and I actually think we should start to flip-flop these where the chances are a little higher on Friday than we are on Saturday, a little higher on Friday than we are on Thursday, and then we start to dry things out as we head into the upcoming weekend. Again, that future cast showing that low going in over the mid-Atlantic. I do want to briefly touch on the tropics. I talked about a potential cyclone. Eight, which of course didn't become Helene. Well, we still have Gordon swimming out there in the Atlantic winds of 30 miles an hour, and it will stay a fish storm as it continues to recurve. So uh, if impact shipping lanes, but going back and forth from a tropical depression to a, a 50 mile per hour tropical storm as we go into the weekend. So that is certainly a long lived storm. Looking out in the Atlantic, I mean, we have some potential for some waves, but I mean, look what's going on here as you look into next week. Is there sort of a combination of that old low over the Carolinas and the low that's trying to exit over the North Atlantic. Do we have another storm, kind of a homegrown one trying to form here? Could we ultimately have Helene, you know, in that same spot, you know, off the Atlantic coast and, and doesn't want to come back toward us late next week? I mean, it's something we definitely have to watch. That's why I was talking about sort of that mischief off the East Coast. So sea and sand will stick with this through the official end of summer over the weekend. Easterly wind 10 to 15 miles an hour. The waves are three to six feet. The rip current risk is high. So if you're trying to get that bonus beach time in. It can be a little dangerous to get in the waters. Air quality is good. The UV index will be at a five. Seven in the morning on your Tuesday at 65 degrees. You've got a high overcast. You've got high and low. Some high overcast and some patchy fog. 50s north and west. Then that fog will burn off. We'll get clouds and some filtered sunshine at times. It's still a very pleasant day and tomorrow night's nice too. Hopefully we get some filtered moonlight and you can see that full harvest moon. There's actually a partial eclipse of that full harvest moon, but we'll have a lot of clouds that could obscure that. Hopefully we can get a couple of thin spots in the clouds and get a look at that full harvest moon. Here's your seven day. All right, so we get dry day number 10. Could we even squeeze in 11? I mean, could the showers stay to our south in some places on Wednesday? It's not out of the question, but we'll go with a forecast of the potential for a little morning drizzle south and east some afternoon rain especially south and then we're all at risk for some showers at night a shower around on thursday but also some breaks in the clouds a better threat of a couple of showers along with a windy day on friday breezy with some breaks on saturday only around 70 fall arrives i think that's the better half of the weekend with a mix of sun and clouds and we're partly to mostly sunny on monday your seven day accu weather forecast it's always available on abc7ny 24 7 thanks for listening to whether or not we'll see you next time rain or shine